Hey boys and girls, Miss hey Pennington, Miss Russell, Miss Kaylee's behind the camera helping us out today. We just wanted to give you a little help with your packet. You should have by now, you should have picked up. Um, don't stress over this packet. Don't let it worry you. Don't let it consume your whole days. Just work on it when you think about it. It'll help you so much to be ready when we come back to school. We can't wait to see you. We're going to start with a little vocabulary lesson. Go ahead, Ms. Russell. I was just going to say that this packet is from the um, State Department of Education, and we were required to send this out to you. And we just wanted to go over some of these questions with you um, and how you would answer them. Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to skip on down to number three in your packet. There's no story, no passage, so you're strictly using context clues from your sentences. Number three, map makers use the line to divide the earth into two halves. We're supposed to figure out the meaning of the word divide as used in this sentence. The first thing we're gonna do is go back to our sentence and find the word, circle it, and let's read it again. Map makers use the line to divide the earth into two halves. Let's think about what we already know. We use this word a lot already, Miss Russell. Yes, we do. Think about in your math, math um, classes with Miss Morgan, Miss Blake, and Miss Smith. You've used the word divide. Use your background knowledge and what you know about this word and how you've used it in the past. That's an important skill set that you need and that you can do with vocabulary words. Okay, but let's look at how it's used in this sentence. Map makers use the line to divide the earth into two halves. If I have a map of the earth, it's flat and earth is a circle on that map. So let's draw us this, a picture of the earth over here. If I want to divide the earth into two halves on my map, let's go ahead and do that. Did I circle the earth into two parts? Did I part the earth into two halves? Did I split the earth into two halves? Or did I spot the earth into two halves? And I think real quickly you can see now that we split the earth into two halves. Just like if you had 10 puppy dogs and Miss Smith told you to divide them into two halves, you would split those into five and five. Same thing on our earth. And just remember, boys and girls, when you have four choices, most of the time you're going to know two of those choices do not make sense. Circle and spot, you know those are not gonna be your choices, but then you're gonna have two and you're gonna have to really think about those two choices and you're gonna have to decide which is the best choice. When you um, divide something, you can put it into parts, but when you have something, you, you divide it into equal parts. And we use the word divide and split most of the time when we're talking about equal. Okay. Now, we're going to skip on down to number six. Okay. okay, guys, number six has a part A and a part B. Um, I know I like to say in my classroom, when you have a part A and a part B, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. Your B is going to support your A. B is going to explain why you chose what you did for A. Peter was sitting up very straight with his eyes fixed on Lightfoot's antlers as though he had never seen them before. So we, we're gonna think about the word fixed and what it means and how it's used. We're gonna mark it and we're gonna read that again. Peter was sitting up very straight with his eyes fixed on Lightfoot's antlers as though he had never seen them before. Okay, Ms. Pennington, let's look at our answer choices. Okay, we've got open, repaired, uninterested, and unmoving. So before I jump right in there and pick my answer, because I've got a little background knowledge on this word fixed. And when I think about fixed, I think about I fixed supper, or I fixed the hole in my shirt. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's look at our answer choices because I, I can't make that sound right in this mm -hmm. sense. A lot of times when you fix something, it's something that was broken. Hmm. Let's think about that. So let's break down our answer choices. A lot of these answer choices, well, three of them have prefixes, which can help us understand these words if we don't. The first one is open, no prefix. 
But Peter was sitting up very straight with his eyes open on Lightfoot's antlers as though he had never seen them before. Hmm. We use the word open when we talk about eyes sometimes, so I, I can't totally throw that one out yet, but let's hold on to it. Part, uh, letter B, repaired. Hmm. What do we know about R-E on the beginning of a word? It means begin. Right? No. Again. <laughs> <laughs> repaired. Do it again. Like we talked about fix. Repair. Do something again. Peter was sitting up very straight with his eyes fixed on Lightfoot's antlers as though he had never seen them before. And even though we were just talking earlier about when we when we use the word fix, we, we think about fixing supper or fixing a hole in your shirt, and that does mean repaired. Hmm. But I don't think that's the meaning that, that they're getting at with this sentence. Also, when I go back and look at this sentence, when I see Lightfoot's antlers, when I see this word antlers, I, I think of a deer. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can't make this one sound, can't make this one match what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Let's keep going. Uninterested. The prefix on this word is un, which means not, not interested. Eyes fixed on Lightfoot's antlers as though we'd never seen them before. Not interested. Doesn't sound like that one would make sense either. If his eyes, he's looking at something, so if he's looking at it, I don't think he's uninterested. I think he's interested. Unmoving is choice D. Not moving. Your eyes move or they don't move. There's one part, Miss Russell, that keeps sticking out at me in this sentence. As though he had never seen them before. How do you look at something you've never seen before? Think about if you walked into your house and there was a pile of money laying in the floor. A pile of money as big as you are. Your eyes would be open, but your eyes are open all the time during the day unless you're taking a nap. And you're going to be staring at something you've never seen before. I like that word, stare. staring. So, repaired, I just don't yeah. think so. Uninterested. I don't know about you, Miss Russell, but if I walked into my living room and found a pile of money, I would be interested. So, I think that one totally doesn't fit. I want to think about that word stare. I'm even going to write it down right here. If you're staring at something, what's going on with your eyes? Are they open? Yes, they're open. But they're certainly not moving and we just said that this un means not so let's just see if that makes sense peter was sitting up very straight with his eyes unmoving on lightfoot's antlers as though he had never seen them before unmoving would be the best answer choice all right but now we've got to find our proof we've got to do part b okay remember part b explains um, it supports why you chose what you did in part A. Um, so, which phrase would um, on your on your paper your answer choices was A? See, um, was sitting up. Is that what helped us? B. Very straight. C. On Lightfoot's antlers. D. Never had seen. Good readers. When you're reading, you, you probably make notes like stare or underline clues. When we just did part A, we underlined our proof when we were doing part A. Never had seen, D. which Never helped us seen. choose unmoving. Yep. Okay. Last one we're going to do is number nine. Skip on down to number nine. In ancient Egypt, the people made boats, sails, candles, cloth, mats, and more with them. We're trying to figure out the meaning of the word ancient. Now, boys and girls, this sentence does not give you a lot of clues, and you're going to find sentences like this, so you just have to pick the best answer, and you may come down to those two, like Miss Russell said. Right. Okay, let's look at our choices. A, busy. B, hot. C, far away. D, very old. Okay. In ancient Egypt, the people made boats, sails, candles, cloth, mats, and more with it. 
I'm looking at the verb in this sentence, and I'm looking to see past tense, present tense, future tense. The verb is made, but what do the people do? Made. And they made boats, sails, candles, cloth, mats in the past. So if it was in the past, they made it, they already made it. Which one of our answer choices tells me, points to the fact that it's already been done? The only one that matches that is D, very old. And remember boys and girls, use your background knowledge. Think about um, in other, where you have seen this word before, ancient, and maybe some other stories, um, maybe on the news. Think about where you've seen that word before too, and that'll help you. We hope maybe this little short lesson helped and you can find more little videos um, from different teachers for different subjects on this YouTube channel. Thanks. See you guys. Bye guys.